today we will talk about enterprise BGP OSPF ISP failover and this is very specific to an enterprise where you have two ISP set up failover with BGP and OSPF. So the setup that I have is going to look like this. I'm going to have this guy as router five ISP one and then router four ISP two is four. is five and they're connected to each other in my case directly and then you have your yes one twenty three with OSPF and you have your routers Edge routers router one and then another edge internet edge router router three so these two internet edge routers will be connecting to your ISPs we're done in fashion you got this connection going and then you got another connection to the secondary ISP. Your core router is going to be sitting here. And that's going to be your router two in this case. And you have a network that you will advertise here and these are connected like this redundantly to your core routers core router is connected to your internet edge you can have redundancy on your core router as well but here i'm just for the sake of simplicity keeping it as it is and let's just say you have network 26 that's connected to your web server here this web server is sitting on network 26000 slash 24 so now having this network you have your this network as 45 slash 24 dot 4 dot 5 this one is 15 dot five dot one and this one is 34 dot three and dot four and these transits are 12 dot one 
one dot two. This one is there twenty three. dot two and dot three. Now in this OSPF network, you have OSPF default coming this way to your core from your internet edge. So this is your internet edge. Both of them will be advertising quad zeros to your core. Quad zero, quad zero. So this core R2 is learning quad zero from R1 with a metric of one and from three with the metric of 100. So when this guy, he will prefer outgoing this way for internet. And when this he loses this quad zero with metric one, he would automatically fill over to quad zero with metric 100. The ISPs are sending a quad zero through BGP. So that's BGP quad zero coming in. From both sides. All right. And for BGP fast convergence, your timer between your ISP one and ISP two would be, I'm tweaking that for fast convergence by default, it's very slow. Uh, but here I'm using three and five seconds so that it fills over within five seconds. Keep alive three and fail over or hold time five seconds. So with this configuration and I'm advertising this route Got a loop back here. That's part of BGPS that I'm going to try to reach from this web server. Outgoing 2555. So it's going to prefer going this way first. And then when this guy fails over, he's going to go this way. Now 555 needs to obviously is a public address. So it needs to be learned uh, on this guy as well. So I'm advertising 555 this way towards R4, but I'm only advertising quad zero to my enterprise customer, and that's all he's going to get, quad zeros. All right, so that's the setup, and let's quickly look at the failover scenario first. See if I can move this guy here and bring my routers. So here are the routers. Let's look at router one first. Show IP route. He's getting a quad zero from BGP 15005, which is this guy right here, 15005. My BGP summary has only one neighbor which is my isp okay so that's good and my bgp fast failover
is got a timer of three five, so that quickly fails over. And I'm advertising 26, which is my web server address, which is a public address, and I'm learning 26 to OSPF. So my core router is advertising OSPF 26 uh, network to my edge router. Edge router is using network command to advertise that one to the internet so that the reachability is there for both of them. So now if I ping the loopback of ISP, it works. If I go to my R2, because I'm 26, so I have to, and if I run a ping right here, it'll take 12.002, so I have to do a source. Show IP route, I get a default from OSPF from 12.001, which is this guy, and it's pretty straightforward. Show run partition router OSPF1. It's just simple command with metric one on router one and on router three. It's metric 100. And I'm advertising the 20. Six, it should be 26. Uh, network 23 of this guy. But on the edge, I need to advertise 26. And it's not necessary for this demo, but if you, if you have a web server, you need to advertise 26 from this side as well as this side. But let's just do that for the reachability because that's what I'm doing network. 12 and 1. So five has not learned five is learning twenty six from fifteen oh one. By through BGP. There it is, network 26 on router one. Router three should be doing the same. There it is. So 26 is going out from both sides <clears throat> and your ISP is advertising quad zero. Network quad zero, and it's advertising its loopback to R4 only, not to R1. Huh? And the timers are set for 3.5 towards R1. Okay, now that we have this going, and R2 is my core router. I'm going to run source 26. Trace route. Trace route doesn't give me a source option for that. You need to go to uh, router 6, which is my web server. And it's going through. 2602 and then 2602 and then 12 and then 1505. So this is the path it's taking. And that's my web server router six right here. Okay. Now we can just run a ping here. Repeat 1000. And then I go to my router one, interface E towards router five, and then I shut. And let's see how much it dropped three packets, literally five seconds, less than five seconds, and then it converged. 
And it can voice because router 2, the core router 2 now, has got, instead of from 1201, it's got a quad zero from 2303 from this site. That's how quick it is. It's a very simple design and uh, very straightforward. And BGP OSPF will only advertise quad zero if it learns quad zero. And that's a, the simple command for that is So originate, don't use always, otherwise it's going to always advertise it. The simple command, default information originate would basically say that if you have a quad zero route in the routing table, which I don't at this time, from BGP, it's basically this one is now coming from 1202, which is from here to the core back to this guy. So OSPF is not gonna advertise this back to, to avoid loops, but when it learned the BGP route, it would only ad advertise quad zero when it has a quad zero route. So right now it's learning from three and it's not gonna advertise the same one back from that same interface to avoid the loops for on router three, you will see that it's advertising the quad zero because it's learning it. So if I shut down this interface, OSPF is not going to advertise quad zero. So I go here, interface E towards four, shut down, quad zero is gonna disappear. Quad zero is gone from the internet edge. Quad zero is gone from the internet edge. The core router will no longer have a quad zero. There is no longer, it's not going to learn the quad zero anywhere. There it is, it's gone. We lose connectivity to the internet because both the ISPs are gone. So as soon as I bring back R5, no shut, and R3, towards 4, no shut, R2 is going to learn, quad 0, with the better metric, and before that it was learning with a higher metric because your primary ISP was down. It's a quick failover, but it will only be quick when you have aggressive timers of BFD configured between your ISP and yourself. And that is typically um, uh, a difficult thing to do. Uh, it all depends on your relationship and how much are you paying to that ISP and all that good stuff. But that's how uh, a quick enterprise ISP failover design would look like. Hope this helps.